Anthony and Giglio, but everybody calls me Kat. Um, welcome to my studio. It's so great to be back in the studio. We were gone for such a long time. We took a wonderful trip with our kids and grandkids, and it was lovely spending family time and watching grandkids grow and slide down slides and do all kinds of fun summer things together. But I have missed my studio so much, and I'm so glad you're here. I want to thank you all for your subscriptions and for your comments and your likes, and you know I will get back to you with comments as soon as I possibly can. I love making new friends, so if you are, um, if you want to follow me on Facebook, uh, Pinterest, and Instagram, I would love to, uh, to be friends. So. Today we're going to be doing something really fun. Um, in 2015, summer of 2015, uh, I was published in the issue of So Somerset. My work was published. I wasn't actually published in there. But um, we're going to work on my flower collages, which were in, in there today. And it's a wonderful um, project. Uh, you can use up all of your scraps. Uh, you could use paper instead of fabric, but we're going to be using a fabric base. And we're going to be photocopying real flowers. So I think you're going to like it. And we're going to do it right now. So these are the collages that I created. And it was, the article was called Fleeting Summer. And um, as you can see, they are all on fabric and they're scraps stitched together with collage. And then uh, the little flowers are photocopied. So they were flowers that came out of my garden and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna just explain to you how to create that look. So you're simply gonna start with real flowers. That's pretty simple. This is a little impatient. I just took the back off of him and you're just going to pop the stem off and just lay them down in your in your photocopier face down of course in a row so that they come out like this you're going to put a piece of white paper behind it and then close the lid on your photocopier and you'll have wonderful images of flowers to use it's really simple and really fun you can do this with all kinds of leaves and different things to get a completely different effect in your collage work. So you have to have that first and I've already got a couple that I've cut out that we're going to use, some pink larkspur. So the piece we're going to recreate today is this one and the, these were all uh, matted pieces that I sent in to Somerset. They were, they were made to be gifts and I gave them away to all my friends. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to come close to recreating this. We're going to do it with pink flowers though and uh, obviously different ephemera because I don't have that antique ephemera anymore and as you know I only use original in my work. So we're using an 8x8 mat. It's a double mat which I really like and I cut a 6x6 piece of uh, mixed media paper to fit the back and we're going to actually work on the piece on our mixed media uh, paper and then we're going to glue it down onto the onto the mat board. So we're going to work off of this piece and we're going to be using up all of our scrap pieces of fabric and if you're like me I know you probably have a lot of different scraps and what you want to do is iron them so that they're nice and flat and you might want to put a, a fabric size if they're really old if they've been really wrinkled these are assorted things, um, assorted pieces of fabric. There's muslin, uh, there's an old tea towel, uh, there's a piece from an old, an old pillowcase, uh, all different kinds of fabric. So you can use whatever you have on hand. And then we're going to uh, work at, at covering this. So I've already taken the liberty of, of uh, stitching together a couple of pieces so we wouldn't have to take so much time in the video to show you how to do this. So all I did was cut two pieces of fabric and then I stitched them together with a running stitch. That's it, pretty simple. And I did the same thing on this side. I cut the fabric larger than my six by six so that I would have a nice margin. You don't have to worry about them matching up. You don't, you don't need to even care about that because we're going to trim it off at, at the end. But this is the way they would normally be if you'd stitch them together. 
but we're not going to do that because that would be boring. So what we're going to do is we want the threads to show because that is interesting. And when the threads show, you're creating extra marks in your work. So you're creating a mark rather than using a pencil, you're creating it with thread. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it and stitch these pieces together. And I'm going to show you the finished product in just a minute. Did I want it to match up? I think I did. Okay, so I screwed that up. Now I had a little pin uh, in the center so that I could make sure that it was even. I didn't do that on some of them. Some of them I wanted them to be uneven, but because we were creating a square, I thought it would be kind of fun to have it even, even though it's not going to show up even once we get it on the, on the paper. So I'm just going to take that out, and then I'm going to press this, and I'll show you how I do that. I'm using my trusty studio iron to press this, and I want to press the edges down. You can't really hurt this iron. I've had this for a million years, and I've been using it in the studio for a long time. I'm putting gloves on because I finished up the Liquitex gel matte medium that I had and I am now using golden and I if you read the back of the label you'll find out why I'm putting gloves on so I don't I don't get this on my hands and I want to use a dry brush I want a little bit but not a lot I want just enough to create a tacky surface on my substrate which is what we're going to attach the fabric to. And as you can see, it'll be attached just lightly. Don't want a whole lot. There we go. Did I do it? Oops, leave that one on. And then we're just going to lay our fabric down. And if it's not quite right, just reposition it until you get it where you want it. There we go. Next step, trimming. So you simply turn your piece over and trim the edges on the back. And if you want to, you can glue the edges down a little bit better. I never really worry, worry about that. Actually, I don't worry about anything in the studio. And if you're trying to read my t-shirt earlier, it says seven day work week, which is what you get for seven day weekend, not work week, seven day weekend. <laughs> And that's what you get when you do something that you absolutely love. And I love creating art and inspiring others. So, seven day weekend. Okay, so we've got it all together here. And now we're going to collage it and glue it down. The next step is to gather up your ephemera. And I have lots of bits. Lots of little scraps. That's one of the things that I love about uh, this project is using up all of your bricolage, whatever you have on hand, and little tiny pieces. And so we're going to incorporate all of these. And I really loved uh, the, uh, the piece in the book. It had a wonderful... title at the top of it. The piece in the book said the symbolism here and I thought that was wonderful so I looked for another piece that might be similar to it 
and uh, came up with uh, antique poems and some fun writing, some pieces. So we're going to just play with those and see what we think, how we, how we like it. So I was thinking the piece in the book actually is more of a triangular shape. So I thought we would do something closer to this. And then I also used some scrap, some Victorian scrap in the book. So I thought I would lay a few pieces together like this. And I'm not sure about this piece. This is actually tissue paper. And let's see. Hope you can still see that. You can still see it. And I'm not sure how I'm going to put this. Maybe like this, and this, and then see what we think about it here. Hmm, kind of like that. So we're going to glue these down now. So I'm going to glue the fabric down, and I'm going to put my gloves on in just a second here. Just wanted to make sure I got the, the fabric glued so that it would lay a little flat. And you can play around with your composition as long as you, you know, as long as you want to. Try to try to figure out exactly where you want things to lay. And I think I want this to point up into my composition and lightly glue. Oh, you know what? I think we're going to put this down first. It's just fun to play with it and try to figure out where you want things to go. And here's the other thing. If you glue it down and you don't like it, rip it off and do it again. Just put something else down. Just don't fret about it. It's just so, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be enjoying what you're doing. And creation should be fun. No stress. So, I think I like that. Fleeting summer was all about how our summers are so quick. They go so fast. So many people have snow and ice. I don't have to even think about that now, but. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that. Let's see what this looks like now. I think I like that. We're going to put that here, this one here. So you're just trying to capture a moment that's ephemeral. It's, it's fleeting. It's not going to last, and you know it. And that's what makes it so lovely. And we're simply going to glue that down. I love gloves because you can really make great contact. We're going to glue that down and we're all finished. So you can create wonderful collages on fabric. I hope this gives you some great ideas. You can capture the flowers of summer and keep them forever. I hope you enjoyed the segment today on flower collages and I'm going to have some classes coming up soon. So we're going to be working on uh, my butterflies and hopefully have a class for you in the future sometime soon. So stay tuned for that. And um, thanks so much for your subscriptions and your comments. We really appreciate it. And um, hope you enjoyed it today. Ciao for now.